Hi, welcome to SBR TV. I'm Peter Loshak. This is our uh, opener show that we do, uh, that we've been doing every week during football season with John Ryan. And now we're about to look at the openers for the college bowl games, which came out on Sunday. We're actually shooting this on Thursday morning, so these aren't quite openers anymore, but uh, they are still very new lines. John, how you doing? I'm doing good, Peter. How about you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. All right. Now, bowl lines, I, you know, I admit, everyone knows that I'm an extraordinarily talented uh, handicapper in general, but bowl lines I've not been that great with uh, historically. This year, I'm looking to get a little bit better with them. Uh, how are you in general with bowl lines, and uh, what kinds of things do you look for when you're looking for, uh, for value on a bowl betting line? Well, what, what I do is I actually set a line uh, of what I would set it at, and then I run my, uh, my simulator and see what that comes up with, and then compare the two, and then when the lines come out, uh, the differentials can really, you know, be eye-opening. Right. And there, there's several games that I'm, I'm sure we'll go over that are, you know, I'm surprised that the one team's even favored. All right, let's start off with with what lines uh, caught you as interesting. Out of all these lines, which lines surprised you the most? The one that surprised me the most, I think, is the, uh, uh, the Virginia Tech-Michigan game. Mm -hmm. um, I was surprised to see Michigan favored in this game. Mm -hmm. uh, I really thought that Virginia Tech would come out, you know, at least a four- uh, point favorite. So the fact that Michigan is is favored is uh, kind of eye eye popping to me. Um, another one was the Oklahoma State Stanford mm -hmm. total uh, coming out at seventy five, and I and I thought that was a little surprising on the upside. I had that more in the mid sixties mm -hmm. uh, than a game that's going to be you know a barn burner extraordinaire like that that is reflecting uh, so those were two that really kind of stuck out to me i mean you know the michigan virginia tech line why why would that surprise you the michigan michigan is a very quality team virginia tech sure they they ended their season uh, great uh you know with with their shutout win over virginia but then they got you know blown out by clemson why does it surprise you that they opened as a favorite it, just simply i hate to say it this way simply because michigan's coming out of the big 10 mm -hmm. uh, i don't see the big 10 as a very strong conference this year uh, you know, Wisconsin obviously is a, a good team. Michigan State's a good team, uh, but once you get past those two, uh, there's there's a pretty big drop off. All right. Uh, you have to remember, Penn State was playing for the Big Ten title, and uh, you know, I, I barely even have them as a top twenty-five team. Right. All right. Well, let's let's jump on to the uh, Penn State Houston game now. You know, Houston, of course, uh, was looking like you know an, an awesome team that was a great bet all year long. Then they completely laid an egg in their last game. Uh, now they're a five-point favorite. They've opened a five-point favorite over Penn State. Uh, what's your take on that line? This is a this is a great game actually to uh, to start handicapping, and which I have not done. But you mm -hmm. have a, a very good defense in Penn State against a prolific offense in Houston, arguably one of the best offenses in the country, uh, who did have one bad game against Southern Mississippi. Uh, so this is going to be a very interesting game. I, I'm a little surprised that uh, the line is only five, given mm. uh, Houston's ability to score points. Uh, Penn State's only given up 24 points or more once this year, and that was in the game against Wisconsin. Um, so this will be a this will be a very interesting game to try to handicap and then watch. Right. All right. No, another piece of uh, common wisdom that that you hear is that you want to look for like pre uh, New Year's Day dogs. Uh, for value. And um, I'm looking at two. I'm thinking Washington plus nine against Baylor and Northwestern plus 10 against Texas A&M. You know, both Texas A&M and Baylor were, uh, were teams that, that did well at times, but in general had weaknesses. Do, do either of those lines strike you as maybe a bit too high? Uh, not the Texas A&M game. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, remember way back in the beginning of the season, that was a top five preseason pick. And, and there was reason for that. They have, mm -hmm. they have the talent to have been a top five team. Again, Northwestern is one of the lesser teams in the in the Big Ten that just you know is bowl eligible. So Texas A and M is in a situation where they could uh, yeah they they could easily blow out Northwestern in that game and, uh, upon initial look. Uh, the Baylor game, you know, that's that old saying: if Griffin wins the Heisman, then uh, you definitely play against Baylor. Go ahead. And it looks like he is the odds-on favorite to win this Saturday the Heisman. So you, you certainly don't want to make a bet based on the Heisman. And I'm not suggesting anybody does, mm -hmm. uh, but Baylor could be a little flat uh, coming into this game. I hear. All right. Here's a line that might move. Uh, Wisconsin, Oregon, Oregon right now is minus six. I don't exactly remember where it opened, but uh, do you think that line is more likely to move up to seven or down to three? Yeah, I think it's going to move up. Mm -hmm. uh, the public's been enamored with Oregon all year, 
And, uh, you know, Wisconsin's flying under the radar. You know, they, we talked about them over the last month as being a, a tremendous team and, and actually at the time was playing as one of the best teams in the country and still is. Uh, they, they struggled against Michigan State in that game. I was a little surprised that they fell behind. Bottom line is they came back and won. Uh, so they have the ability to come back from deficits. Uh, so I think this is a great matchup. All right, and then what's your take on the Iowa-Oklahoma line? Because I'm looking at this. At the end of the year, I was fading Oklahoma because, you know, the, the injury to Broyles really hurt him, and Landry Jones was maybe a, a bit of an overrated quarterback. So, you know, this, this is one of those bowl games where I'm looking at it. You know, Oklahoma's had sort of a down season. I'm thinking Iowa getting 14 is probably a good bet. But then again, you know, I don't really trust my instincts when it comes to bowls. Uh, where do you think this line might move, and do you think either side might have value here? Um, I, th I think it's going to go to Oklahoma. I, mm -hmm. I too, have overvalued Oklahoma. I thought Oklahoma would, um, you know, with four weeks to go, I still thought that they had a shot at being a number two team. And uh, clearly that was that was wrong in a big way, um, especially in the Oklahoma State game. So, you know, again, I, I keep, I seem like I'm uh, just hammering the Big Ten. I don't mean to. Mm -hmm. no, uh, but Iowa, again, is coming out of the Big Ten. Um, you know, the style of play in the Big Ten is that a slower, methodical, traditional, fundamentally sound blocking, you know, you know, more of an academic style of, of football. And right. Oklahoma has speed that Iowa just has not seen. Okay. Uh, so I think Oklahoma's defense will, um, you know, they'll have a huge advantage against Iowa in that bowl game period.